What what do you what's your prediction? Five hundred or below five hundred? Oh, above, b- above five hundred. Oh no, below. You, you, I think it's below. Y'all think you could, <laughs> guys? Jonathan, 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 Jonathan. They went shit. they went five and twelve last year with Nathaniel Hackett. What he was trying to tell you, he, he sucks. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Dorm Debate podcast we are back a little bit earlier than scheduled we usually come back about a week before the season starts but we had to come on just quickly do a little short video about the first week in the preseason we had a lot of rookie debuts that we're going to talk about and some teams that got some new coaches a i.e the broncos with sean payton we're going to talk about him um, and just, just really give our thoughts, maybe touch on Dalvin cook and Zeke with their new teams. Um, so it's going to be a quick episode, but a good one. As always, we got Jonathan and John here, Caleb couldn't make it, but he'll surely be back soon. Uh, guys, the question on hand that I want to pose to you guys, which rookie quarterback are you most concerned for after seeing them in the week one preseason games? So for me personally, it was definitely the number one pick. Bryce Young out of Alabama went to the Carolina Panthers. And all the highlights that I saw of him while I was watching, it seemed like he was getting hit every play. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it was like every single down. I mean, that old line just kind of fell apart and he was getting hit very often. Um, his stats during this game, he was four for six. Uh, 21 yards total, nothing too crazy. It's like you can't really judge a quarterback off that, but you could judge an old line off that. They gave up about seven sacks um, throughout the whole game, and that just concerns me a lot. I think Bryce Young is a great player, but I'm curious for you guys, um, do you guys think that him being bad this year will just compound the media talk about him being small and like Kyler Murray and like, Oh, he's too small. He's going to get injured. I feel like him being bad, like in the next, you know, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, it's just going to keep compounding. Like John, remember when Jamar chase started dropping all those balls in preseason, people start to overreact. And I feel like for chase, he improved quickly for Bryce young. It's going to be tough because he has no weapons. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's going to be tough for him. Now, the only thing, this is what I see happening, and let me know if you guys agree. <clears throat> I actually see this kind of playing out how Trevor Lawrence, when he got drafted. Remember exactly. Trevor Lawrence's rookie him. year? Mm-hmm. We kind of didn't really talk about Trevor Lawrence. Like, towards the middle, mid to the end of the year, we're like, wait, why, why isn't anybody really talking about him? And I think that's what's going to happen with Bryce Young. He's a great talent, don't get me wrong, but he's in a bad situation And Jared, I think what you're kind of alluding to is the fact that there's really not that many expectations on him. He's a great player and everybody expects him to be good for his career, but everybody knows he's in such a terrible situation. And everybody knew Trevor Lawrence was in a a terrible situation in Jacksonville when he got there. So we didn't really expect much much of him. And when he struggled in his rookie year, we didn't really talk about it because we kind of already expected that. And I think that's what's going to happen with Bryce Young. We're all kind of expecting him to get hurt or get hit, not hurt. And like you said, he has DJ Chark, he has Adam Thielen, Terrace Marshall Jr., and he's got Miles Sanders in the backfield. And those are all tier two or tier three guys that have been around the league. So it's like, we're all not expecting too much from him. Now, the reason his first performance doesn't really concern me is yes, he did get hit a lot, but he only took one sack. So I like to see him getting the ball out, even though he did take some hits. It's going to be tough with that offensive line. But I just think that this season, I'm not really expecting much from him. And I don't think we're going to be talking about him that much. Yeah. I mean, those are interesting thoughts. I think pointing out his offensive line is a key reason why many would be concerned about him. But guys, after watching that, that game, watching every snap he took, I can tell you this guy's different. Um, I, I should be a scout. I told you I should be an NFL scout. I know how to see talent when I when I watch film. This guy is going to be great. He's probably you talk you talk about the most concerning rookie performance. He's probably the best rookie performance given that he didn't. Yeah, I, I agree in with terms that. of interceptions. If you if you look at his decision making, it's superb. It's on another level. He understands the game. He understands the offense. There's a reason why 
the head coach named him the starter like the first few days, like the first few weeks. When I saw the game, yes, the offensive line was concerning, but it was a preseason game. In the preseason, you're trying to work on the fundamentals and the mechanics as a quarterback. You're trying to mm-hmm. make sure you're looking at the reads and making Your sure your footwork can, is good. Making sure your footwork is good, making sure you, you understand the play development. When the actual season starts, I think you guys will start to see a different Bryce Young. Don't forget, this guy is mobile. He's not a little pocket passer that is going to get sacked. He's yeah, but mobile. You, you, you can make plays gonna happen. Have, but you think he's going to have success in his first year? I think he's going to have success. Believe me, because the, the reason being, the reason being, guys, the the people that can make plays last longer, like Patrick Mahomes of the world and Jalen Hurts, those are going to be the most successful quarterbacks in the next few years. Bryce Young's one of those guys. Not only can he make pl- pl- plays last longer, he's a great decision maker. He understands the game. He understands the X's and O's. So in the preseason, you saw the glimpse of that. He he didn't rush much. He didn't show you much of that because he's trying to get the fundamentals down and understand the offense and show the, you know the coaches that hey, I understand the. I understand the playbook well. I understand the, the grasp of the playbook. I don't need to scramble. But in, during the regular mm-hmm. season, when people are coming to chase him and there's actually things on the line, I think you'll start to see him scramble more and get out of the pocket more and extend plays and start to scramble and, make, and make, just make plays. And he, he can rush the ball too, right? Um, and so I think this guy, he's going to be superb this first year. I, don't, I wouldn't compare him to Trevor Lawrence. I think this guy's on a different level than Trevor Lawrence. Oh, no. Trevor Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence he, in he's his athletic rookie quarterback. Year. No, yeah, well, Trevor, no. Trevor, hey, Trevor Lawrence, Lawrence is an athletic quarterback. Trevor Lawrence is an athletic quarterback. He has a talented arm. But this, what makes Bryce Young different than these other quarterbacks? The decision making, the understanding of the playbook. He's always going to find. I disagree. Guy. I think Lawrence will have a better career than Young. Oh, you got you're in for a treat. I'm telling you, you're in for a treat. This guy, this guy's the new NFL. This guy's the new NFL quarterback that you want to see. He's. I'm telling you, he's going to be good. And I, don't, I think you should be concerned because of the O line. Hopefully, that improve the O line, but. He's going to scramble. He's going to use his legs. But to do it in, system. but to do it in year one with that line and those weapons, I mean, he'd have to be like freaking Adam, hey, Adam like Thielen's the best not player ever. Adam Thielen's not a scrub. Yes, he is. Um, he's well, I mean, he's he's a good player, but he's getting old. He has he has decent pieces. He doesn't have scrubs here. I mean, he's going to make plays happen. He's going to make play. You're going to see that. Um, and there's a reason why he's come from top powerhouse high schools. Matter Day in California, he was a, a he was a beast there. He started at Alabama, and he was superb there. I know it's not the same Alabama team. He played with five-star talent, but believe me, there's a reason why people like this guy. It's not just because of his athletic ability. It's not because he's mobile. This guy is smart. He understands the game. He's he's good at understanding playbooks quickly. He's good at understanding play development quickly. He makes quick decisions. He's he's not just good physically. He's good mentally, and that's why he's going to be talented. I'm not worried about this guy. I think he's the best. He had the best performance out of all rookies, in my opinion. The guy I was concerned about, the hunts of mine, I would say – the Houston, Texas. I knew, you, I knew you were going to say that. I w- I'm not yeah. going to say Stroud, but I knew you yeah. were going to say him. Yeah, I mean, I, after watching the film, he didn't play as bad as I thought. A lot of it goes on the O-line, right? He didn't have much time to throw. But in that scenario, I mean, that's why you're getting paid millions and millions of dollars, right? You have to make something happen. And he, it's tough well, the for thing him is, to make something happen. I was He's surprised at how immobile he was. Exactly. He's not I mobile. didn't. I didn't realize he wasn't that's that. That's an issue. Yeah, that's pretty – with that O-line, you're right. Yeah. So and, like, he didn't have time to really see his play develop, right? He was in a rush. Oh, he's um, also playing throws. against Belichick. Yeah, that's a good point. He, Belichick's good against like rookies, right? He knows yeah. that. But um, even that, I think the Patriots aren't playing any crazy defense, right? They play pretty right. basic defense in the preseason. But I think you could see CJ Stroud sort of freaking out, right? It's not like Ohio State where you have great offensive line and everything, and they're going to protect you. You have like five seconds to see who you're going to throw to. No, he's freaking out. And you saw the running back check down over there. He, he overthrew him. In the NFL, you got to make those small things, yeah. right? That can make it like a third and five or second and five rather than like a third and ten. That's a big thing in the NFL. And so that's what makes the great quarterbacks great. They know how to get the fundamentals down. That short little pass, you have to make those throws. So I could tell he was a little nervous, a little shaken up. And they said he wanted to go back in the game to prove himself. But uh, what I saw from him, it's concerning. I hope he can turn it around. I hope the offensive line can improve. But, I mean, if not, then it's going to be a, a tough team to – to, to um, handle this this first year for DeMar- D'Amico Ryan, right? De- um, yeah, D'Amico Ryan. Yeah, so we'll see. Yeah, he definitely struggled. And we didn't really even get to see much of these these quarterbacks, but the one that I was concerned with is An- Anthony Richardson. Um, a lot of hype around him and his combine skills, and he, he does have great rushing ability, but the interception that he threw was really bad. And I, I know it was just one throw, so I don't want to rake him over the coals for that. But he didn't look very good. He he looked like he didn't belong there. 
And Mm -hmm. another reason why I'm pessimistic about him is that we still don't know what's going on with Jonathan Taylor. It's just the aura around that team is just not good right now. And it's tough to play for a team that's not together. Um, It doesn't really motivate you to do better. And he's just in a bad situation. I don't really see him having a good first year at all. Um, I I honestly think that Gardner Minshew is going to start at least a few games this year, whether it's Mm -hmm. in the beginning of the season or when Richardson struggles. It's just inevitable that Minshew plays a few games. Um, Mm -hmm. But one guy I wanted to bring up, we were talking about rookies that had uh, one of the better performances. Did you guys see Stetson Bennett for the Rams? Gunslinger, I mean, this guy, nothing phases this guy. I I just don't get it. He just every time shows up. He had Mm -hmm. 191 yards and a touchdown. And he looked just like Stafford out there, just composed, poised, firing it in there. I mean, he, you can tell he has nothing. He has nothing to lose, anyways. Like, I'm yeah. not going to start this year anyway, so let me just have some fun. So right. there's less pressure on him. There's more pressure on Anthony Richardson, Bryce Young, CJ Stroud. So um, that that probably had a little to do with it. But yeah, I mean, Stetson Bennett, he's like 28, 29. So he, he's, <laughs> I don't know about though, that. Yeah, I mean, even though he just graduated college, I mean, he's he's like, he knows the game pretty well. He's a lot of experience, um, and so yeah, he's he's pretty poised um, in his in his play. So yeah, I was I was impressed by him. Yeah, man, Stenson Bennett's. I think he's the same age as Jared Goff. It's crazy. Wow. Oh yeah, that's right. That is crazy. <laughs> crazy. We've partnered back up with Manscaped to give you guys twenty percent off and free shipping on all their items. That includes the Beard Hedger and all their below the waist grooming products. We all know how injuries can ruin a season, so let Manscaped protect that Reggie Bush of yours with their skin safe technology. The leaders in below the waist grooming have created a championship lineup with their performance package 4.0, and it's time for you to do the same. Join the 9 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get ready for kickoff by going to manscaped.com and getting 20% off and free shipping when you use the code DormDebate. Let's go into, you know, from a rookie quarterback to veteran Super Bowl winning quarterback, Russell Wilson. Um, Some things were said um, by Sean Payton about former Denver Broncos coach Nathaniel Hackett. Uh, Payton said that Nathaniel Hackett did, and I quote, one of the worst coaching jobs in the history of the NFL. Urban Meyer is you know, still in the record books, right? (laughs) Still there. Um, And he said that there were 20 dirty hands around quarterback Russell Wilson. So Sean Payton says this, it gets to Nathaniel Hackett. Sean Payton ends up forcing to have to apologize. Um, Just not a good look, to be honest, especially before a preseason. Uh, you're, You're not even you're not even in the thick of the season. We don't even know how you're going to do. Like he must feel about as confident as anybody to say a statement like that. Um, but John, you were talking about the aura of the Colts or, or around the Colts. I think this aura around the Broncos is bad. I, it's bad juju. I think it's bad karma. I think there's a lot of things that are not aligning for this Broncos team. Number one, Sean Payton, he's a great coach, but obviously has some baggage. He, as you can see, doesn't mind riling up the media. You got Russell Wilson, who over the offseason, a little bit into last season, you heard Richard Sherman, you heard Marshawn Lynch talk about Russell Wilson and how he wasn't that great of a teammate. He was very distant, very somewhere selfish. Um, like for example, he would give players, uh, his phone number, but it wasn't his personal one. It was like the one to his, you know, business receptionist, whatever. It wasn't even his personal one. So Marshawn Lynch is like, yeah, it's hard to even contact him. Um, so, you know, with players that you've won a Super Bowl with and you're not a great teammate with them, it's hard to believe that you're great teammates with these guys. Um, and that's the kind of aura that I see. I think it's just every man for himself at the Broncos and they're by mid season, they're going to be pointing the finger at either Wilson. They're going to point it at Sean Payton. Um, it's just too easy to do that. And in this division, they're definitely the worst. I actually only see three teams in the AFC worse than the Broncos. 
and that's the Patriots, Texans, and Colts. So to act like this team gets Sean Payton and automatically is going to be amazing, isn't it's not going to be the case. I'm sorry. This team has can't have a healthy running back. With Javante, he seems to be coming back week one, but he just tore his ACL. Who knows if he's going to be good. Jerry Judy and Corlin Sutton have yet to be proven as star receivers. They are great receivers. They are not stars yet. So you don't even have a star on offense. So everything goes on Russell Wilson. And last season, he was 27th in QBR. It's not his best performance by any means. Do I think he's going to be 27 this year? I don't think so. I think he will improve with Sean Payton. But after all that rambling on the Broncos, you guys know where I stand. But the question to you guys is how confident are you that Sean Payton and Russell Wilson can turn the Broncos around? Yeah, I am, I'm not very confident. And I am not confident for similar reasons that you brought up. And... Jonathan, I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. When Mike McCarthy left the Packers, he didn't come to the Cowboys right away, right? He took a year off or two years. I can't remember what it was. Mm -hmm. And how did he do his first year with the Cowboys? I mean, the Cowboys have had a great talent. So right. yeah, naturally, they always got to make... Yeah, it was a lot easier. Now, he did, yeah. he did well, um, but there was still some uncertainty about everything that's that right. he was adding to the team. Exactly. And what I think that's happening here is that Sean Payton comes in. He was with the Saints, took a year or two off, and he's you know been doing this research and whatever. So he's going to come in and fix the Broncos. He says the other coach is doing shit, so I'm in here. I got to fix everything that get this guy messed up. Now, Jared, like you said, the, the vibe or the aura around the Broncos, I just don't think is good because here's Russell Wilson and the level he was playing at while he was on the Seahawks and it took such a dive. I don't know. It was, it was a combination of everything. It was a combination of the coaching staff. It was a combination of the talent of the new system, the new team, everything that brought Russell Wilson all the way down to this point in the Broncos. Now, Sean Payton is going to come in. He's going to implement a new system. They're going to have to learn the new system. And uh, trust me in the, the NFL is so difficult to succeed in this league, you have to have some sort of momentum. And what I mean by that is you have to have a season under your belt of you kind of already having some understanding of the offense and the players around you and the coaches around you. You're not all of a sudden going to be able to take Russell Wilson from here back to here. It's not going to happen. Trust me. It just won't. And when I talk about the teams that are going to do better this season than they did last season, now the Broncos could do a little bit better. But the teams that I'm thinking of are teams like the Giants. I think they're going to be better this year than they were last year because we didn't make any coaching changes. We added, we actually added Jalen Hyatt and Darren Waller, and we kept Daniel Jones. He's in his second season in Dave Ball's system. I'm also high on the Jaguars, as is everybody else. They finished last season very well in the last eight games, winning a playoff game. And they actually added Calvin Ridley, kept the same coaching staff. So when you look at these teams that are going to do better than they did last year, it's teams that didn't lose many pieces, aren't making a lot of changes. Usually when they do make changes, it's slight changes, adding a receiver, something like that. So as far as the Broncos go, I'm not confident that Sean Payton can turn this around this year. Now, as for next year, maybe he could do that and start to gain some momentum this year. I'm not saying that they're going to be just as bad as last year, but it's hard for me to just switch the flip, flip the switch in my brain and think that Russell Wilson is going to be a great quarterback, whether in fantasy football or in real life. And in that first preseason game, he did throw a touchdown to Jerry Judy. And a lot of people that I've been talking to in the fantasy football community are high on Judy this year, but I just can't bring myself to being drafting Judy Sutton, Javante Williams with the torn ACL, Russell Wilson in fantasy football because of how much uncertainty there is. I still need it to be proven to me before I can go ahead and trust them. Yeah, I agree with everything you guys said, but I'd have to respectfully disagree. I think there's an opportunity for them to turn around this year um, for a few reasons. Um, number one, guys, you don't understand this, but in the NFL, I would say 80% of the success of teams is the coaching. Okay. Patrick Mahomes is who he is it's because of Andy Reid. Let's just say it. It's because of Andy Reid. If he if he came to a team that was Nathaniel Hackett, you, you may be maybe well there's the there's, there's a combination of both though. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, but uh yeah, I mean yeah, you have to have a certain level of talent, um, which Patrick Mahomes does. But like in terms of this situation, 
I think Sean Payton, he's that, he's that you know, hard nosed coach that will turn, he's able to turn things around, right? If the team's but, not but how well, he's quick? Gonna, but how quick? I think it's going to be this season. Maybe the first few weeks they'll struggle. Preseason, you see them struggling a little bit. I think they'll get better as the season goes along, as they become more comfortable with the system. But Nathaniel Hackett, he wasn't a head coach. He's too nice. Right. Yeah. He didn't. He didn't know how to th- call things schematically. He didn't know how to str- strategize and strategic uh, chise in the, in, the, in the game. Right. That first game, I knew he wasn't going to be a good coach. Right. Yeah. He didn't know when to use a timeout and all that. That was embarrassing. And so, guys, everything Sean Payton said was accurate, but people probably said you, you know probably shouldn't come out and said that. But I think he also said that he came out and said that because he wa- wanted to give his team confidence again. He didn't want people to say, oh, but aren't you counting, suck. You're, you're counting your eggs before they hatch. You haven't even played a game. Yeah, yet. It's a lot of pressure. I mean, I know what yeah. you're saying. He wants to build some confidence that we can turn this around, but that's a lot of pressure. But guys, and as a coach, it's tough to win a Super Bowl. He's won a Super Bowl. So you can talk the talk, right? <laughs> you can talk the talk. Like he has, if he hadn't won a Super Bowl, then we could be saying something, but like, he knows he won a Super Bowl. So he's like, man, I can say what I want. Cause I want a Super Bowl. I know what it takes to, I mean, yeah, Drew, but that's, he did have Drew Brees. It's, it's, you know, it's I mean, very, it's Drew Brees played yeah. there in his entire career, basically. And so like, I think Sean Payton helped Drew Brees reach that level. Yeah. But so no, he knows what it takes. He, he, he knows what it takes. He knows it's going to take some building, but he's saying, Hey, like, if it, if it takes a while, I'm, I'm just telling you why they, this tank, this team was poorly coached these past, this past year. And so maybe take a while for them to get on this, get on this horse. But I'm telling you towards the end of the season, this is going to be a, you know, a powerhouse and look, they're, they're in a tough division with uh, the chiefs. The Raiders, um, right, and and the Chargers. That's a tough division. Don't get me wrong, but I think they'll be able to compete well towards the end of the um, towards the end of the season um, with with all those teams. But again, I'm putting I'm putting the emphasis on the coaching here. Sean Payton, he he's going to be able to turn things around. Okay, he's a tough coach. He's not I, do, I just don't baloney. see how it could be so soon. It's you, haven't you been? You've been you've played football. Don't you know yeah. what it's like to be part of a team that's just that was was pretty good and then just sucked? Like you, I know, yeah, you don't yeah, get yeah, exactly. from sucking so bad to being like, "Yep, we're going to win a lot of games this year." It's, I'm not saying they're going to. Hey, I'm not saying they're going to win the Super Bowl. I'm not saying they're not going to win the division. Probably not. But second or third, you think yeah, you I, think possible playoffs? They can make a wild card. It's possible they can make a wild card. They can compete well. I think I think they'll be about average. Perhaps you know compete for the wild card opportunity. But guys, you guys don't understand. A tough coach can turn things around. He can make average players and lift them up a little bit, right? And take them better than they're, they're supposed to go. Nathaniel Hackett wasn't that guy. He's not assertive enough. Sean Payton, is, he knows what it takes. He's assertive. I mean, crying out loud, uh, what, what gate? Bounty gate was under his. I mean, he didn't. He was in charge of it, right? But his defensive coordinator. This is a tough guy. He's not going to take any baloney from his players. He's gonna, he'll cuss them out. He'll do what it takes to make sure his team is not embarrassed. Because, again, his, his reputation is on the line, guys. It's not just the Russell Wilson's reputation. His reputation's on the line. He's won a Super Bowl. People know he's great, but he wants to prove something here, and I think he's going to be able to do it. So I think they'll be able to turn things around, not win the division, but compete for a wild card. Yeah, it's it's risky. You you could have rode off into the sunset with your Super Bowl, Saints, Drew Brees, and all that, but you decide to come back and risk it all and go to, as what he calls it, oh, I'm – coming after one of the worst coaching jobs in NFL history, it's true. you know, from, from Nathaniel Hackett. Now he's inheriting um, the Broncos. Mess. Yeah. The mess. <laughs> if it doesn't work out and it blows up in his face, it hurts his legacy. That's going to be one of the last things, last teams that he's coached. It's very risky for him. So he has just a thing of confidence right now. And I, I just feel like I, I don't know why he has it. I'm just I'm trying to find. I, I wish I could go into his brain and see what he sees. Right, like who did like who the did game. they get? But who, what players did they add? That see, you like, guys are just talking about the players, though, guys. You don't just focus too much on the players. The players. But are there's as good a as reason coaches. that Mike McCarthy was able to have success with the Cowboys. He didn't walk yeah, into yeah. like bad players. There's yeah, nobody I mean, that McCarthy had on the Cowboys, honestly. I think Dak was better when McCarthy got there than Russell Wilson is now when Sean Payton got there. And Zeke is better yeah. then than Javante Williams plus P. Ryan. And any of the Cowboys receivers, which was Amari Cooper, is better than Judy and Cortland Sutton. So Mike McCarthy had better players at every position. But the Broncos, do, they have a good defense, though. That's one thing. They have a really good defense. Their offense just has to improve a little bit for them to be in these games. True. But a lot of those, their games this season, I mean, they competed well against the Chiefs and all these, all these guys last season. They have a mm-hmm. good defense. So 
the guy that will be able to take this thing around, I think, is Sean Payton. You guys will see that. You guys will see the effect of great coaching, right? This is a case study. Y'all should take this. I'm telling you now, this is going to be a, a much better Broncos season um, for, for, for them. And again, the first few weeks may be bumpy, so I don't want you guys to come back and say, hey, I told you so. I'm telling you, I'm warning you. The first yeah, few we'll weeks wait till the end of the season to come back. The end of the season. You'll, no, we'll, we'll come, come back, back to this. Don't worry. Exactly. Don't worry. Let's record. <laughs> what, what time? At 28, 13. Okay. 28. Okay. <laughs> yep. This. Let's come back. Wait, what, what yeah. do you, what's your prediction? 500 or below 500? Oh, above, b- above 500. Oh no. Below. You, you, I think it's below. Y'all think it's <laughs> guys. Jonathan, 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 Jonathan. They went, sure. they went five and 12 last year. With Nathaniel Hackett. He was trying to tell you, he, he sucks. We all knew he sucked. No, we didn't just want to come out and say it, but he's everybody knows he sucks. Sean Payton had the, had the balls to say it. He sucks. He, he was a he was a terrible coach. And Urban Meyer takes too much crap. I mean, he had a lot of stuff. He had a rookie quarterback and all that. This guy's the worst coach probably in NFL history. He's right. <laughs> what what can you do? So the first few weeks will be bumpy, but believe me, they're gonna be above five hundred at the end of the season. I can't believe you guys think. Come on, guys. Come you on, can't you really serious. think above? Come I mean, that's on, a no. that's a bold you, prediction. That's bold. Above, believe me, above five hundred. I'm telling you, I'm confident in Sean Payton. I'm confident in a good coach. So they're going to go at least nine and eight. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll see. It. Fair enough. Thank you guys so much for listening. So much for watching. There will be more debates, more predictions next week. We start it back up. So hopefully Caleb will be here to join us and he'll tell us all about how the Eagles are going to win the Super Bowl this year. (laughs) But thank you guys so much again for listening and watching. We will see you guys next week.